Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, and I'm here to show you through the restoration suite and some of the restoration type plugins that come with Sample 211. This is going to be a really quick, informal kind of demonstration. Uh, but you have any other questions that, of stuff that I don't cover in this video, feel free to email me or call me at the information on the screen or at the contact information on the sample2.com website. Now the main difference between the restoration suite and the restoration plugins that come currently with Sample 211 is the restoration suite bundle allows you to use these plugins in real time uh, in the objects in the object editor and such as that. Um, I'm going to show you through also the spectral cleaner and some interesting things that it does uh, as well as go through some of the other um, plugins that come along with the restoration bundle. So let's start right now with the acoustic guitar track that I recorded um, with the click track slamming out of my headphones so that way we could actually have a use for the spectral cleaner. Um, obviously in recording sessions we have this happen all the time where there's a little bit of bleed through coming through the acoustic guitar track um, and a spectral cleaner is a fantastic way to go through and clean it. So here's currently what we have. So let's open that up in the spectral cleaner. Right here you can actually show, see the actual uh, clicks coming through. I'm just going to kind of blindly grab those real quickly and hit playback. You can hear them disappear. Uh, if I make them disappear, bring them back, you can hear them again. Now to draw them very nicely in the way that they probably should have been to begin with, let's do this. Let's open this guy up a little bit more and hit playback. Cool. Now, hopefully you can hear in my demonstration, there's an actual click that's coming through once the guitar starts playing. Right about here. Let's go ahead and grab that guy and bring him out. And it's going to leave the rest of the guitar perfectly intact. Pretty cool. Awesome. You hit calculate and it is gone permanently. You could also not hit calculate and keep adjusting, adding more, subtracting more, doing whatever you need to to make this correct. But Spectral Cleaner is an exceedingly powerful tool and I use it all the time to get rid of all kinds of things. Let's find what else we can find on this actual, this guitar part. Now, viewing right here, I can actually see that um, using the comparisonics that we have built into Sampletude, there's a finger squeak right here. Let's chop this area so we can zoom in on it a little bit better. So now, right in the middle of the screen, we have those finger squeaks from actually, you know, moving your fingers on the strings. So let's see what we can do about pulling that out. How's that? One more time. And without it, back to normal. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so that's it for Spectral Cleaner. Obviously, you can do an immense amount of editing with Spectral Cleaner. It's just a wonderful tool. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at background noise. We're going to look at the noise reduction plugin that comes with it. I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with this, so um, bear with me. We'll go through this fast. For the ones who have not used this before, this is a really powerful tool also. I'm going to use this offline because I always use it offline. Uh, whenever I get a, a, a session in where there's noise on different tracks, I always go through and adjust them and fix them and do everything offline uh, strictly for noise reduction on a track by track basis so that way because each each one has a different noise print and now a noise print is the actual thing when we open this up not the object editor when we open up this you can actually see the noise on either side of the actual signal here's what it is testing one two three Okay, and there's a little bit of noise. It might be hard to hear just the way I'm miking up this video. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and we'll make a noise print. We're going to take a snapshot of the actual noise. Go up here, hit effects, restoration, get noise sample. Now we're going to select the entire area in question. We're going to go back up and hit the denoiser. You can also have a hot key set up for that. I always forget to use mine on that because I don't open this one uh, that often. 
Um, because most of the tracks that get recorded here are clean. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and we'll just hit like a, a normal preset. Testing one, two, three. And now you never want to remove the noise too much because you'll get the dreaded underwater effect. If you do something like that, you start getting, testing one, two, three. You start getting the kind of wobbly sound to it. Now the best way for me to go through and adjust this is using the invert and taking a listen to it. You want to make sure you're not losing too much of the original signal. Um, a lot of these other things, uh, the the smoothing of attack, the smoothing of the release, that's how fast the processing jumps onto it and jumps off of the noise. Um, the correction, very powerful. This one, usually between 50 and just above zero, is the numbers I end up using for most of the time. Mess around with this, you'll see all the different ways it goes through. And basically, it's the way that it's implanting the print over the top of the noise. So if we just hit playback. Testing one, two, three. I can also take it up. Testing one, two, three. And it starts changing the audio slightly. You can also see an effect in the actual screen of what's going on right here. So again, inversing the sound, definitely the best way to dial in the sound that you want. You never want to remove, maybe not never, but I rarely will remove more than about five, six, maybe seven dB worth of noise out of it. Any more than that, you start affecting the actual original signal that you do want to keep, the actual, in this case, a voice. So you hit OK, everything's applied, and you're done, and uh, that's it for that. Now, the next example we're going to go to is distortion. This part, in this part, I have a, a bass track that was sent to me where the guy had fried the bass on recording. So you can hear it kind of farting out. Let's get to a busier part of his actual playing, so that way we can uh, hear it more often. Okay, so now we're going to use this one in real time. I'm going to hit effects. Can hit restoration, declipper. Okay, now the way that this looks obviously is because it's squared off its, dis its digital distortion. So we're going to choose digital distortion down here in the kind of clipping. There's also a choice for analog and digital, which ends up getting used a lot around here when stuff gets um, brought in here. But this one I can tell it's just shaved off all the tops of them, so I know it's digital distortion. I'm going to make this a minimum clip of, uh, a, sorry, a minimum clip length of three samples. Um, don't ask me why, that's just been what I've been using for years. Um, now when I hit playback, the things that you're looking at on my screen is a red line showing where the clip level is at. Um, in this case, we're going to move the clip level down until we see it start registering in the declipping area. At the same time, you're hearing it clean up. Now, again, best way to test this is hit the inverse button, and you can hear exactly what it's removing. All right. Now, mix. As you bring it down, you get some of the original back into it, which in this case is some of the original distortion. You want to make sure that you get a blend that makes it still sound natural, because sometimes if you have it 100%, you'll actually be taking away from the original signal in a way that not not really pleasing, so you can move it around a little bit. Um, in this case right now with this bass, 100% works great. We want full, full bore click removal. Cool. Now, as I brought the clip level down, it's at minus 2.8. 24 dBs below zero full scale. Uh, the line reflects that, and the level where it was actually distorting is somewhere probably around, because I actually brought it down for this test, it's probably around about one dB. So we're a dB or so below where it was actually clipping. Digging into it that much makes it so it's able to clean it up the way I want it to sound.